Hey everyone, I'm Aid Smith and welcome to the Clicked Editions Review. You may know me from the main podcast where we talk about comics, RPGs and all things geeky. Uh, but here I'll be talking about mostly Bronze Age and Silver Age collections in the hope of persuading some of you to pick up a few and experience these great stories. So today we are talking about the Spider-Man by Tom McFarlane collection. Uh, this book contains issues 1 to 14 and 16 of the Spider-Man series from 1990 as well as the crossover issue from X-Force 4. Uh, the Spider-Man series is written by and drawn by Tom McFarlane. The X-Force issue is plotted and drawn by Rob Liefeld and written by Fabian Nassizia. So let's talk about how much of a big deal this was back in 1990. Uh, McFarlane had just come off an incredibly successful uh, Spider-Man run on the Amazing Spider-Man title and was rewarded his own Spider-Man book. There was a standard cover, a silver cover and a platinum cover of issue one and then there was a second print gold cover. Um, and there was an advert ad campaign in Marvel Age which basically said if you'd missed out on the original Spider-Man issue 1 in 1963 this was your chance to get your hands on the new Spider-Man issue 1 now obviously nowadays new issue 1's pop up every 2-3 years or so but back then this was a really big deal um, the strange thing was obviously that after the 15 issues that McFarlane actually contributed to um, he was actually off the book. Um, he had some run-ins with Marvel Editorial, um, mainly about the way the book was going and s- some of the art, art demands he'd made for other people during Spider-Man at the time, and he had left the uh, book by issue 16 with, and then followed on by Eric Larson, which is uh, pretty much exactly what happened uh, during the Amazing Spider-Man series. So, about the book itself, issues 1 to 5 uh, of the uh, first uh, story is the Torment uh, series. Uh, this contains mostly uh, some stuff with the Lizard and a new character at the time called Calypso, plus a resurrection of the then-dead Craven the Hunter. Uh, issues 6 to 7 contains the story Masks and features the Hobgoblin with an appearance by the uh, Danny Ketch Ghost Rider character, who was incredibly popular at the time. Um, issues... 8 to 12 can contain the Perception storyline, which has got the obligatory Wolverine crossover, um, where they go up against the Wendigo, and then issue 13 and 14 contains the story Sub City, which is a guest appearance by Morbius Living Vampire. And uh, this one is a fairly dark story containing um, kind of like homeless people and people trafficking, and contains a lot of the hallmarks from stuff we'd see in Spawn a few years later. Lots of uh, poses and capes and stuff flying around that we see in the, in the, those early Spawn issues so all in all I like these stories I remember when I was read them first time around these stories actually felt a lot more epic than what was currently going on in Amazing and Spectacular at the time uh, the writing is a little verbose with uh, text boxes kind of all over the place but even then it kind of reminded me of the old Conan stories or even um, some the Frank Miller Batman stuff where the character's either narrating to himself or there's kind of actually just explanations of what's actually going on in the story itself. So issue 16 is the uh, crossover with Liefeld's X-Force um, where they actually kind of tangle with the Juggernaut. It continues directly on from X-Force 3 uh, and the, both of these issues are actually done sideways for a kind of a widescreen experience with something they experimented with a couple of times I think during Marvel the, the 90s uh, run um, the McFarlane piece is he utilises this kind of effectively double page spread really well there's a couple through there, lots of lots of stuff going on Spider-Man kind of jumping all over the place by the time we get to X-Force 4 the live field stuff isn't quite so spectacular I've never been a real fan of uh, Liefeld's artwork. He has gotten better, I think, since the 90s, but the, the cross-hatching and all that kind of stuff was a kind of a very 90s thing going on at the time, and he seems to have really, really relished it in, during this issue. Um, but it kind of rounds up the story. It, the characters in X-Force I actually do like. I, I was a big fan of Cable at the time, and um, a couple of the other X-Force members. So, all in all, it's a it's a good continuation to a obviously a... Uh, existing Spider-Man story and obviously rounds out the issue for McFarlane's run during this time on the book. Now the end of the book itself is basically got lots of reprinted uh, stuff from various collections, some uh, penciled covers and some uh, uncolored pages from the book itself so we can actually see some of that kind of original McFarlane style artwork which again has always been a uh, 
one of the definitive Spider-Man uh, artists during the time. Now I've obviously gone back and seen a lot of stuff in the Epic collections, which contain other artists' work. But McFarlane during 1990 was the pinnacle of Spider-Man stuff. So the strange thing is there is a actually a bit of a printing oddity um, with some of the black areas in this book as well. It looks like it might be the underprinting for the various colours that might have come from the original uh, 1990s issues, where anything that's next to a colour is very, very dark black, and anything slightly further away is kind of like a great, very kind of dark grey colour. Um, whether or not this is due to those original issues, I'm not too sure. But if it is, I'm quite surprised they didn't actually go back and alter it so the actual black colours are black all the way through rather than kind of this mismatching grey and it really stands out on that kind of glossy paper as well so um, but it doesn't mess with the book itself it's still perfectly readable it's just a strange thing that they didn't actually try and fix considering that Marvel have gone back and fixed a lot of stuff um, for their epics and their omnibuses from way back in the 60s and it look, you know, would look really really good so all in all though you know, printing technology's changed so maybe from now on we'll see something different anyway so this is still a great book um, there is pretty much the only way of collecting McFarlane stuff outside of Amazing is to get this book um, it rounds out his run with Marvel obviously we see the Spawn omnibuses and that kind of stuff coming out last year so if you want McFarlane stuff you can get those early books as well but if you're looking for uh, Amazing Spider-Man stuff this is definitely where to go to so if you're a fan of McFarlane's art like me I suggest you go out and pick this one up Anyway, so with that, thank you once again for tuning in to the uh, Collected Editions review and we'll speak to you next time.